Hello ladies and gentlemen, as always, I'm your host, Eric Swift Al, and this is a content update video. Kind of give you guys a insight as to what's going on behind the scenes and sort of what's happening in terms of reviews. Now, the biggest one, of course, is just getting out of the way. The media reviews, especially the three sponsored ones, are happening. It's just I have to balance a lot of the content I'm doing, so there's a lot of juggling, and of course the biggest one I have a collaboration planned with, so I might be doing the first two by myself, and the third one is going to be the last big one. So, yeah, kind of depending on how things go, the sponsor reviews may get mixed in with the regular media reviews, or I might be just doing rapid fire ones just to kind of get them out of the way. Uh, it's just how it is, and again, it's... It's a lovely bit of stuff. Again, a lot of stuff happening this week, especially as I'm uploading this video, the Fallout TV show is coming out. So, yeah, I might be going to some watch parties and uh, watching the Fallout TV show with some friends and family. Now, the media review content is out of the way. Well, one more thing before I move on to the next bit of content I do on this channel. Uh, the biggest media review I want to do is at Sector 9, reviewing a Airsoft uh, manga, actually, a Airsoft Isekai manga. I actually would like to film within their little shop they have one of these days uh, at a game day, but it's kind of one of those things of I've got to wait and see and kind of talk to the guys, see if it's cool with them. But either way though, moving on to the Airsoft content, the Airsoft content is as follows right now. The next bit of content is of course more NCR content, or at least in this case the Appalachian Alliance content, and sort of the story that's evolving with that, which hopefully will lead up to eventually one big airsoft event one of these days, if I can ever, you know, get that off the ground, more or less. Uh, outside of that, though, the largest bit, of course, is reviews. Now, the next review is going to be the Jag Arms Scatter Gun. Yes, you heard correctly, the Jag Arms Scatter Gun, which, of course, is, which I do have gameplay for. I've got a ton of gameplay for it, but I wanted to kind of I might kind of mix up the gameplay a bit, kind of like, you know, highlight footage, highlight reels of this thing in action. Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet. Let me know if you want the gameplay footage of it that I got at the last game day for the review, or if you'd like me to do a highlight reel of this. Just let me know in the comment section down below. Now, with that out of the way, of course, you're probably wondering what Airsoft content is in the works or what's kind of coming up. Well, what's coming up, of course, is hopefully some pistol reviews. However, one of the pistol reviews is probably going to be on the back burner because the safety is kind of missing. The pistol with the missing safety, of course, is the Vickers Tactical 1911. Uh, it's, it's kind of missing its safety, but thankfully it has a recessed safety over here, which is actually locked in by the polymer grip. So all i got to do is just find our safety, and of course the pin that actually goes in there with the spring, and uh, I'll be able to have this thing working again. Uh, I might just replace it because this is a WeTech double safety for your standard 1911s, and I can get more magazines because, again, it's a WeTech, so, yeah, and it doesn't, it's not like it's broken, it still works, but it's, uh, you know, just one of those things of, I kind of would like to have it, just for, uh, you know, safety reasons. Moving on. Now, before we continue on, of course, we do have some sponsored content, we have some, of course, content from our boys over at Fiaci, their new tactical light, which we will be doing a video on. As well, of course, as some safety glasses, which are, yeah, they're not good. They're really not good. And I will explain why in the video itself, but uh, it's one of those things. Now, getting back to the airsoft content itself, we do have more pistol reviews. Two high caps, to be exact. One of which, of course, is an Army Armaments John Wick style, basically copy of the Terran Tactical uh, high cap or 2011, which is a 9x19. Uh, Hopefully, this one, of course, is missing some parts, of course, uh, like a front side, of course, which I may steal off of this one, which we'll get to this one in a second, and, you know, that sort of thing, uh, but, yeah, aside from that, this one is one of the high kappas on the review docket, the other high kappa is, of course, this little high kappa, which I have no freaking clue what brand it is, it is a split style, it is, an, it is a 45 ACP replica, like I said, it's a split style style of, uh, if I can get the fucking slide release, there we go, the slide release is a more recessed in, so it's kind of a, yeah, it's an interesting design of High Kappa, I'm not going to lie, so I might do a little research, kind of look into it, I don't know if it's a KJW or not, uh, one of the things I will say though is that it's definitely going to be an interesting review, and definitely, uh, and definitely interesting, because it's got no rear sight, it has no rear sight, so, uh, yeah, I'm, 
we'll see what I can do with it. But yeah, it has the flared magwell. Same with, of course, the uh, army armaments, except this one's a little bit more, uh, you know, yeah. So whether it can take the extended, like, base plate for the CO2 mags, that's going to be definitely interesting. That's also another uh, bit of contention, is the CO2 magazines themselves. Um, this is missing the other side, so yeah. I'm thankful I've got a high kappa safety that I can replace this with. So yeah, I can definitely replace it with that. Um, it's going to be interesting to say the least to get these things fixed up with the small parts just so they can run properly. But it's simply one of those things. But moving on, of course, now to another pistol, which is CO2 and is wind gun. The next pistol on the review docket was actually unable to be reviewed because the magazine was leaking. And by leaking, I mean it shot out CO2 like a fire hydrant. Thankfully, with the now, of course, having some grease, I was able to basically get it to where it doesn't leak any CO2 anymore. <sighs> Took a lot of grease, as you could tell. But the magazine, the uh, gun itself is, of course, the Wind Gun X Halibur uh, Grand Power Race Gun, which is actually a real, which is based off of a real handgun, and is, of course, uh, made in Slovakia. This is actually one-to-one -one scaled reproduction of it. And I do like the fact that it actually does have the 9x19, not only on the barrel, but also on the slide itself. It is a double action gun, and I legit am looking forward to actually hopefully taking this on the field and seeing how she performs. If I can't run it on the game, if I can't run it in a game, I will at least kind of show off its race gun style, at least being able to, you know, acquire targets pretty quickly and be able to handle it. Again, this is based off of a somewhat entry-level race gun, so it should be interesting to see kind of how it handles as a race gun, to uh, say the least. So, uh, yeah. It definitely will be interesting when I do get a review of this sucker. Now, in terms of shotguns, I do have another shotgun in the collection, which, if you remember, a couple of unboxings ago, I actually unboxed the Elite Force Semi-Auto CO2 shotgun which sadly had some feeding issues and now has even more issues showing up in it because as soon as I took it apart to kind of deal with the feeding issues and uh, the buttstock now will not be able to go back on and it's a pain in my ass and the other thing is of course well something's loose inside of it this is currently the Elite Force shotgun as it is and uh, yeah just Yeah, if you can hear that, there's something loose inside of it. And I do not have the patience nor the know-how to take this thing apart to actually do that, so I probably will contact one of my friends and see if they can kind of look at it and figure out what the hell is wrong with it now and sort of, you know, get it working so I can review it and I can do a video on it uh, because I'm not dropping the $200-plus price tag to basically get another one. Speaking of a gas gun that's currently in disrepair, lame segue aside, I do actually have another gas gun that technically is in disrepair. This, of course, is the Elite Force M4CQB uh, CO2. It is currently like this because the actual main body itself, which is currently under all this over here, I opened up to fix because it wouldn't lock back. And, uh, well, yeah, the current uh, thing of it is that the gearbox, quote-unquote, is over here on the bench behind me right here currently in disrepair but currently opened up and not really uh, doing anything and if anything I could just buy another one of these things swap that over into here so I still have the green body a uh, green and black body I have with of course a somewhat threaded barrel what am I saying somewhat an actual threaded barrel here so that way I can actually have tracer units and threads and what have you um, they're not that expensive. They're like 130. They're like even under 130. Like 125. If that, they're not that expensive. So I can actually save up the money and buy another one of these and just take that and swap it over into here if I can't get that fixed up. Which, again, I might take to a friend, let him take a look at it, and be like, "Hey, you know, but but I want to see if I can't fix it first. Try and let me fix it first, and you know, try and get that to work." So uh, yeah, that's currently that situation in hand. Well, aside, of course, from guns in disrepair and guns that need to be repaired, I do have, of course, three guns that are on the review docket. Well, technically, a lot more, uh, but they're, those are the grenade launchers, and we'll talk about the grenade launchers in a minute. 
In terms of rifles and stuff, I do have two rifles that are actually on the review docket. And two of them, well, one is, of course, very famous for a certain video game from the PS1 era, and another one is famous because it did a rough launch, but now is actually beloved by many in the sci-fi community, and even the cyberpunk community, for good reason. So let's start with that one. That, of course, being the CSI XR5. This thing was actually a trade I did with a buddy of mine called Wolfman. And, uh, yeah, outside of, of course, just basic stuff, it actually is pretty decent. For an all-polymer gun, for the price tag, it actually isn't that bad. Uh, the magazine situation is definitely going to be interesting, and I will be talking about that in the video itself. Uh, thankfully, I can get more magazines from Amazon, link down below, for those who do own XR5s and are wondering where they can get more magazines. Again, link down below. Now, I do have some things to talk about this. I did replace the motor on it to make it a little bit better, so that review will definitely be a little bit more. It won't have a stock motor. It will have a better motor, G&G motor type deal. So yeah, that's just kind of how it is. Uh, aside from that, though, like I said, definitely going to be interesting, to say the least, of kind of how this is going to perform, and sort of all that goodness. So yeah, it should definitely be interesting to see the review on this. But the next gun is one that, sadly, is going to take a minute to get to on the field because of, well, I'll, I might as well pull it out and explain it to you guys. The next corn, the next, <clears throat> the next gun, of course, is one that is coveted by many a gun collector. Is of course loved by Franco files everywhere, is known for Metal Gear Solid, and just all around a fun little gun, and of course is loved by our favorite gun nut from Mike Burnfire, Zach Hazard, and also has a really fun mod on Fallout 4. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is of course the FAMAS. The FAMAS AEG right here is a cyber gun, and as pre owned, I've had it for about a year now. And, of course, I got it from a buddy, uh, Austin. This, once again, is one of those things of, I wish, I wish, I could uh, tell you guys that, yes, I will be taking this out onto the field. Uh, issue, though. Um, one, I need the scope mount for it uh, to be able to run it on the field with the run cam, of course. That way, you guys can actually see what I'm seeing. Number two, I only have the one 300 something high cap. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of the certain situation at the moment and, uh, it's kind of how it is. So yeah, I'm kind of stuck with this because number one, I've only got the one magazine. Number two, don't got the rail for it. Once I get the rail though, I don't gotta deal, like the magazine situation is just one of those things of, I wish I had more magazines for, but I can deal with having just the one magazine. That ain't no problem. I'll run around with bottles of BBs on me like a paintballer and just dump it in the magazine and reinsert it into the gun itself and you know, just kind of go like that. But without the rail mount though, I will not be able to show you guys the run cam, what, what's happening down range basically. But again, just, one of those situations of I will be able to fix it and I'll be able to get it going. So, uh, yeah, that's the current situation with the FAMAS. The other gun, however, is one that I am going to have a lot of words about in October. This thing right here is one that you guys, I let Tony decide on. I let him decide on to get me because, of course, he's a son of a bitch who loves, loves tormenting me. This thing right here is a weird amalgamation of many things. And the sad thing is, is apparently it has a shell ejecting nerf variant, which no, I will not get, and no, I will not talk about, and no, I will not review. I will talk about it briefly in the review for this thing in October, but I can assure you that hopefully, hopefully, this is the only gun I'll be reviewing in October. That's absolute shit. If not, then heaven help me. Because, sadly, this is a single-shot pump-action slug gun, which is just, just going to be interesting. It's just, just, just going to make me very upset and very angry. It, it really will. Moving on, of course. Now, in terms of spring pistols, as you saw in the unboxing, I do, of course, have a SIG Sire P226, 
Springer in pink because, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I may run this, actually, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And then, of course, I've got a Chinese copy of a KWC Colt M1911A1. Now, I do actually have magazines for this because it's basically just the KWC magazines. So, yeah, I can actually and could actually run this in a game and just have a little bit of fun trolling my fellow players. So, yeah, in terms of reviews, I may very well run these just for shits and giggles. And just, you know, have a little fun with it. Like, again, have a little fun. And kind of go back to my roots and origins of just the common man's airsofter who reviews bad guns so you don't buy them type deal. Again, just have a little fun. You know how I talked about the grenade launcher aspect a little while ago? Well, yeah, I've got three grenade launchers. And the first one, of course, is one that I need to talk about. This one was actually the first grenade launcher I got. This is the Matrix M203 in short. And, of course, the one under my arm is one I'll talk about in a second. And, well, yes, I definitely am going to be very happy. Well, S&T Armament, but it's basically just a Matrix collaboration. This, of course, is one that I have ran before, technically, on the field. Not with this barrel. Different barrel. But I have ran this one before. And uh, the only issue I have with this is the fact of... Yeah, it's, it's kind of broken it on the latch that keeps the barrel in place because of the cat who at the time liked and was curious about the thing. So yeah, this will definitely be an interesting video to talk about and kind of do. Uh, apparently the thing here, apparently this thing is just coming apart. All sorts of catty wampus coming apart. So yeah, it's, uh, mm. this is going to be a fun one to do, especially if I can keep it from falling apart to say the least. Oh boy. Like, I I'm not joking. It's it's one to fall apart. It is... Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyway though, yeah, this is one of those I'm going to do a video on. Comparing it to, of course, the ICS uh, grenade launcher here, which actually does have the latch on it and will definitely be interesting to talk about when I find the right gun to put it on. It doesn't have a uh, the latch that would go here, sadly. Uh, but yeah, just one of those things of, I'm just going to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it, what I'm going to do it, and, you know, all that goodness. So yeah, it'll definitely be interesting. Anyway, on to the big boy that I know all of you are probably wondering about because of the last unboxing I did. And yes, I will be talking about it. Of course, being the ICS MGL, this is on the list and the issue I had that was sent to me was the over rotation thankfully I've gotten that issue fixed and I will be able to use it because again it's one of those lovely things of just it's it's a literally rotating revolving grenade launcher you know literally one two three four five, and six. Literally, just boom, 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 boom. You know? I mean, I mean again, it's, it is a grenade launcher. Just saying. But yeah, outside of that, it doesn't have a buttstock, sadly, because the buttstock is missing its latch that allows it to actually be able to adjust. But that's fine. I'm more than happy to kind of have it out like this and just kind of use it like a actual grenade pistol. Now, don't get me wrong, I would have loved to have been able to have the actual buttstock to be able to actually shoulder it and use it. But it's an airsoft. We don't got to worry about actual, like, trajectory and anything of that sort, you know. But yeah. That's one of the many reviews I'll be doing, of course, and kind of talking about. I won't be talking about the shells themselves, because really, if you try to talk about the shells themselves, you'll be here all day. So, yeah. Moving on. Now, of course, as many of you know, I am wanting to do the review, of course, on the Braytac 9mm blank adapter, which is this little bad boy right here. But sadly, I don't really have anything to do it with. I also do have some actual Thunderbees, like this stick one right here, that I... Honestly, I need to take to the field one of these days and actually run as is, because I actually have the CO2 now. It's just, I haven't really decided to do that yet. Now, outside of that, of course, there is the gel ball reviews. The gel ball reviews are going to happen because summer is rolling around, which means I can actually run these things, I can actually do these things, and I don't got to worry about, of course, you know, 
anything of that sort. Now, the only thing I do have for those is, or at least in that category, of course, is this, which of course is a gravity-fed little gel blaster from Evike. Uh, you know, one of those lovely things. You know, just hmm. That's all I got, really. Dear God, that battery actually still works. That's actually kind of funny. One of these, of course, to, you know, do a video on. The other, of course, is the G36, which actually will be a pretty longer and more in-depth video. As to whether or not I can run these things on the field, I'm going to have to talk to the guys at, of course, Sector 9 to allow me to use them on the field just for, you know, the hell of it. Uh, but the G36 which is this one right here. This thing actually is a full-on airsoft gun in a gel ball caliber. Like, I'm not joking on that, and that's what kind of blows my mind. It even has threading on here, like 14 millimeter negative threading, if I can get the thing to actually come off. But no, like, I, I, I legit want to take this out on the field and just run it just to see the reactions, because again, it is a actual, honest-to-God, like, gel ball blaster, like, or an airsoft gun, basically. I mean, it even has a quick change spring system, which is insane. So yeah, the video on this is going to be a little more in-depth than any of the other ones, which will definitely be a lot of fun, I'll be honest. But once again, summer's rolling around, so who knows if, you know, they're going to do gel ball. You know, I don't know if they're going to do gel ball. That's, which, then again, I'm going to be donating whatever I can to them to kind of help them out, so it's, it's, it's whatever whatever anyway as always ladies and gentlemen that's about it in terms of any other content there's not a lot in terms of other content outside of the media reviews now i may be trying to do some gaming videos maybe some mod reviews maybe talking about mods and sort of you know their actual potential for storytelling but that's about it it in terms of what I'm going to be using the gaming PC for because I know everyone's been asking me am I going to do, start doing gaming videos maybe maybe not I don't know it, it just kind of comes down to what I can do with it but either way though as always ladies and gentlemen I've been yourself Al and if you want to help out the channel and sort of help out with future videos consider checking out the links down below to get some cool things in return or check out the tier of course list to kind of you know see how many how much you know a tier is for medias media review basically be it book manga comic book or anything of that nature and as always ladies and gentlemen i'm an airsoft Al, and i shall see all you in the next video or when the fallout tv show premieres and uh yeah until next time